You see this? Put your right hand in the box. What's in the box? Pain. Stop. Put your hand in the box. I'll hold at your neck, the gomja bark. Don't pull away or you'll feel the poison. The Duke's son must know about many poisons. This one kills only animals. Are you suggesting the Duke's son is an animal? Let us say, I suggest you may be human. Your awareness may be powerful enough to control your instincts. Your instinct will be to remove your hand from the box. If you do so, you die. You will feel an itching there. Now the itching becomes burning. Heat upon heat upon heat. Burn. Silence! Silence! I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is a little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. I must not feel flesh. The mind killer. Crisping. Fear is a little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my flesh. Cropping <laughs> off. Here. Here is the little death. I must not fear. Fear. It's a little death. I'm... The pain! No! Enough! Good Lord. No woman, child, ever withstood that much. Take your hand out of the box and look at it, young human. Do it. Pain by nerve induction. A human can resist any pain. Our test is crisis and observation. In the remote Amazonian village of Inhubei, the moan of the horns means a grueling initiation is about to begin. Several times a year, the Saturday Mawe Indians hold a painful 11-hour ritual in which boys as young as 12 must stick their hands into a pair of specially made gloves, each one infested with a swarm of angry, stinging jungle carnivores, giant tropical bullet ants. No initiate can be considered a true Indian, a warrior, until he has worn the gloves not just once, but 20 times. This afternoon, Ted Beltrow will wear the ant gloves for the first time, with 19 more to come. People say that I don't have the courage to do it. I have, and I will do it. The men face the prospect of getting stung even before the ritual starts, when they head off to capture the ants. A stab from this predator's abdominal spear is 30 times worse than a bee sting. The tribe's medicine man drugs the ants by soaking them in an herbal solution. But their stupor will only last long enough for them to be thrust one by one, stinger first, into the gloves. According to the Saturay Mare legend, these menaces provide the perfect test of one's worthiness to take on adult roles. In less than an hour, the ants are awake. Trapped in the woven mitt, they writhe in angry desperation. They're ready to be inserted into the ceremonial gloves. One by one, each young man steps up to the sacred pole and submits his hands to the swarm. Their agony is unmistakable. To help distract them, the medicine man leads them in a dance around the pole. To be seen as a true tribal warrior, each must endure the ant's punishment for more than 10 minutes. 
With each sting, the bullet ant's neurotoxic venom attacks the nerves, causing paralysis and terrible pain. And this is only the beginning. Once the gloves are off, the stinging and burning will only grow more excruciating. Now, after watching the other suffer, Ted's moment of truth has arrived. Unfazed, he keeps dancing, while all around him the others succumb to the poison. Slowly, the neurotoxic venom is turning their hands into swollen, simmering, paralyzed stumps. Finally, the gloves come off and Ted remains standing. My body feels like a motor that's heating up. If you throw water here, a lot of smoke will come out. It takes 24 hours for the toxins to dissipate completely. As the chief sees it, the ritual not only marks the initiate's entrance into adulthood, it makes them better men. If you live your life without suffering anything, or without any kind of effort, it won't be worth anything to you. Despite his long hours of agony, Ted has promised the chief he will wear the gloves 19 more times until he becomes a true adult in the eyes of the tribe. Willie Warren and his seven-year-old son, Philip, are readying themselves for the harrowing jump. They're supposed to come as close to the ground as possible. But if the vines are too long, they could be maimed or killed. People have broken collarbones and hips, and at least one man died when his vines snapped. Even if all goes well, the jolt from the bottom is enough to pull bones from their sockets. Little Philip will go first. Young boys get to jump from lower heights. In Philip's case, 25 feet. Still, it's enough to break his bones or his neck. He makes it unharmed, if a little shaken. Now it's his father's turn to jump, from the very top of the tower. At 80 feet, it's like diving from the top of a seven-story building. He's four times his son's weight, and if the vine snaps, he'll hit the ground at 50 miles per hour. What's more, Willie has to jump out as far as he can to avoid impaling himself on the tower's rough logs. The slightest error could cripple him or kill him. It's a perfect jump and an amazing dangerous moment. All right, so what we got going on here is having these two get comfortable with being in the pocket and not using being able to use the feet. Being in the pocket means you're close enough to make sure that you're able to hit your opponent. And it makes it very uncomfortable when a lot of punches are being exchanged and in your mind you're experiencing chaos and with all the chaos going on you, know, you really don't know what's going on and what should I do and it's a lot. So by Sparring on the knees prevents the two from really getting away or out of the pocket, causing one to get used to being in chaos. Now, when one is in chaos and learns to control their mind, if their minds relax enough in chaos, that's self-control and mental training to get there. But when you're there, you can be a lot more relaxed and handle yourself more effectively. Sets, what's going to be happening here is one learns and focuses on what they're doing and understands to listen to the muscle and focuses on all the ambient mental distractions that if the one stays focused on that, that's going to help that individual drive be, become stronger within oneself, uh, maybe not drive, but pushing oneself beyond their mental normal limits.
going into another place. And that's when somebody really actually starts working out. So we're going on here, and Chris, you know you should have expected something from me, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, let's go. Just start doing some reps. There's no limit on this. I mean, this is completely, has nothing. You can drop that shit. So we're still using, you know, we're using the same amount of weight, but we're going to actually really learn how to do a real set here with this kind of weight. So he's starting to feel the, the, the physical ex exertion going into it and the resistance to the physicalness of it. And he might, he hasn't quite said it yet, but in about a minute here he says, okay, you know what, I know I'm starting to feel it. I don't know, this is getting a little bit harder than what I'm used to, maybe I should stop. <laughs> right. You know? All right, so you can drop that. That's just about, no, 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 no one said stop. <laughs> Okay, so now you're going into a situation now more, you're pushing yourself beyond what your normal mental limits are. But don't talk to yourself. When you start talking to yourself, you, you start interrupting, you're losing focus and concentration. What you gotta do is focus on the body. Anything comes into your mind, it's gonna impair your mind, impair your focus. This is great and this is what you can do in order to overcome temptation. This helps Improve the resilience. You're pushing your mind and strength of resistance beyond what it's normally used to. And therefore, you know, when your resistance down is down from temptation and you go in and you make stuff like this. I'll show you some videos from other cultures. You still got more. That was come tough. on, come on, <laughs> let's go. That was like 35. Okay, well, yeah, but okay, okay, yeah, well, okay, start, you're still working. You can do 10 or 15 more. Come on. Just focus on the body. You've got to feel whether or not there's going to be injury or not. You've got to pay attention to what's going on in the body. Anything interrupts your mind, anything else than focusing on the body is not meditation. So you're paying attention to the mind. Come on. Six, seven more. Two. Come on. you got more. Four. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Five. Keep going. Keep going. Come, come on. Six. Keep going. Keep going. Seven. Come on. Let's go to ten. Eight. Keep going. No, no more than that. Nine, come on, one more. Ten, two more, two more, two more. One more. Okay, that's a little bit better, you know. He, that, that's pushing yourself to another place, but he can still keep going in here. Does anyone ever have to say that there has to be a certain amount of time left on a set? You know, so keep going. Let's go with faster motions now. Okay, change. The, I put on a lesser weight now, so now we can go into a little bit more of a conditioning thing. The mechanics on the other set was a little bit more important because there was much more weight. But now, because there's less weight, less weight and a lot less chance of in injury in the tendons and the ligaments, he could start doing more of a conditioning workout. You could do 20-minute sets. All right, let's mix up the movements. Down, no, 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 don't no, stop. Go down. Down, no, no, down in front of you. Yeah. Cross it over. So the more you focus, the more you pay attention, and you listen to your body, and you prevent things from entering your mind, that's going to improve your focusing and concentration skills, and also improve your ability to prevent yourself from falling into temptation. This is a good form of working out. It's meditation using weights. 